the investigation uh, usually the typical history and morphology or the clinical appearance is very typical of JNA. You can confirm it by one is by doing a diagnostic nasal endoscopy. Using a Hopkins road uh, zero degree telescope, do a diagnostic nasal endoscopy and in that you can see a very fleshy mass, mucosa covered fleshy mass with a typical reddish or grayish appearance. But remember not to do probing or extensive suction, usage of suction in this case. If you do a probing, definitely it will lead to torrential bleeding. So never do a probing in case of um, JNA. And for any nasal mass, we confirm it by doing a biopsy. But if you have any suspicion of a JNA, never go for biopsy. Biopsy is contraindicated in case of JNA. Okay, so never go for a biopsy of the nasal mass in case, in case you are suspecting JNA. And second investigation uh, is an X-ray. You can go for an X-ray PNS also. Uh, <coughs> either you can do a water's view, that is occipitomendal view, or a modified uh, water's view, that is occipitomendal view with open mouth, otherwise called Pierce view. Okay, occipitomendal view with uh, open mouth. Open mouth view is Pierce view. In that case, you can see haziness of the sinus and in the lateral view, you can see as I already explained that Hallman Miller sign. That is uh, anterior bowing of the posterior anterior wall in X-ray penis. And what is the investigation of choice? That is a contrast enhanced CT scan of nose, paranasal sinus and nasopharynx. Nose and paranasal sinus and nasopharynx is the investigation of choice in case of a JNA. So in that uh, you can see a highly vascular mass lesion. And what is the criteria for diagnosis? Confirming the diagnosis, we have the Lloyd's criteria. Lloyd's criteria for diagnosis of uh, JNA. That is one, uh, there should be a mass in the nasal cavity or in the nasopharynx which is highly enhancing. And secondly, there, there, there is erosion of the posterior wall of the spinoveritan foramen. Erosion of the posterior wall of the spinoveritan foramen with extension of the mass into the upper medial pterygoid plate. So, Lord's criteria number one, there should be an enhancing mass in the nasopharynx or in the nose nasal cavity. And second, erosion of the posterior bony margin of spinoveritan foramen with extension into upper medial pterygoid plate. So, these two criteria should be um, satisfied to call it as JNA by doing a CVCT. And there are also some signs like Hallman Miller sign. There are so many, some other signs uh, radiologically in case of JNA. And they are these four signs, you should be aware of this. As we already know, this Hallman Miller sign or Andrus sign can be seen in CT scan also, that is, anterior bowing of the posterior uh, wall of maxilla when this uh, tergobaritan fossa is completely filled with a mass. In that case, you will get a Hallman Miller sign or the Andrus sign. The next is Hondosa sign, that is, uh, when this uh, uh, JNA it goes from telomeratal fossa into the infratemporal fossa, there will be a widening of the space between body of maxilla and ramus of mandible. Between body of maxilla, maxilla body and ramus of mandible. Okay, mandible ramus widening. It is called Hondosa sign. Then Ram Haran sign. What is that? And the uh, Ram Haran sign is seen in case of coronal cut of CECT nose and PNS. In coronal cuts, there will be widening of the pterygoid wedge. Usually this pterygoid wedge is seen as a triangular area. But when there is widening, this will cause quadrilateral appearance of the pterygoid wedge. Widening of the pterygoid wedge. Okay, that is this sign and this chopstick sign, what is that? It is usually uh, noted in case of residual or a recurrent JNA. 
In that case, you can see this both medial tergoid plate as a separate sticks in case of residual or recurrent J. Because there is already this base of root of this uh, tergoid plate are drilled. In this case, it will appear as a floating uh, stick, separate two sticks which is floating. So that is why it is called chopstick, chopstick sign. So these four signs you should be aware of. Yet another investigation modality is a contrast enhanced MRI. Contrast enhanced MRI. And this is usually see, uh, done in case of uh, advanced JNA. Advanced in the sense uh, either there is an intraorbital extension or intracranial extension or parapharyngeal extension. Then to get a very good soft tissue delineation it is better to go for a contrast enhanced MRI. And for long term postoperative surveillance this contrast enhanced MRI is an investigation of choice because it is very good uh, soft tissue delineation without much radiation exposure. Okay without radiation exposure. So that is uh, contrast enhanced MRI. In any um, vascular tumor, you can see the salt and pepper appearance. Not only in JNA, but in any vascular tumor, you, can, you will get this salt and pepper appearance. Why? Because in uh, T2 weighted images, you will get a flow void areas and in T1 weighted images, you will get uh, high density or contrast enhanced images. So flow void in T2 and contrast enhanced in T1 weight. Also you can do a fat suppression MRI. What is that fat suppression MRI? The basis of this fat suppression MRI is that Usually this pterygoid wedge is a high fat containing marrow. Pterygoid wedge has got a fat containing marrow. So in normal case, while you are doing a fat uh, suppression MRI, this pterygoid wedges should be hypo-indense. Okay, hypo-indense in normal case. But when there is an iso-intensity or hyper-intensity, then it means that the pterygoid wedges are, also, are already eroded or invaded by JNA. So in that case, you have to go for drilling or removal of this pterygoid wedge. That is the importance of this fat suppression MRI. The next investigation is CT angiogram. Okay. CT angiography. And the CT angiography is very important to know the presence which is the feeding vessel to the tumour and also the uh, site of entry of this feeder vessel into the tumour. And the knowledge about the feeder vessel and its entry, site of entry into the tumour is very important to decide the approach for excision of this tumour. Um, for example, if the feeding vessel is coming uh, posteriorly and it is not easily accessible and it is better to go for an open approach than an endoscopic approach. So that is the importance of the CT angiogram and the, uh, the commonest feeding vessel to JNA is internal maxillary artery. Okay, there are also so many other vessels but the most, the commonest feeding vessel is internal maxillary artery. It may also uh, get supply from the commonest is internal maxillary artery. There is also um, the supply from ascending pharyngeal artery, the contralateral external carotid artery, then in, uh, contralateral and ipsilateral internal carotid artery and its branches, like mainly median artery, meningeal hypophyseal artery, etc. So the commonest feeder vessel is internal maxillary artery. Can also get supply from ascending pharyngeal artery or the contralateral external carotid artery or contralateral and ipsilateral internal carotid artery and its branches. So that is CT angiogram. Okay, the next investigation is digital subtraction angiography. Digital subtraction angiography. This is also useful to identify the feeder vessel. Selective identification of the feeder vessel and its preoperative embolization. 
digital subtraction and through digital subtraction angiogram uh, we can identify the exact vessel supplying the tumor so it can be embolized selectively uh, preoperative okay so preoperative embolization of the selective vessel can be uh, done through a digital subtraction angiogram and uh, uh, the characteristic uh, appearance is a tumor blush seen in DSA so uh, it can be embolized preoperatively and also we can uh, get, we'll get a knowledge about the anticipated blood loss during surgery so all these are the investigations done for uh, angiofibroma.